I'm Adam. And I'm Rex. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey Rex, how do you feel about cats? It's not a surprise that I'm a dog. No, that's pretty evident. But you may be surprised to know that cats versus dogs is a made-up rivalry. Some of my best friends are cats. Why do you think people think that there's a rivalry? I think that it's like a conversation between shy and outgoing people. Cats are all about independence and mystery. They're like the cool loners of the animal kingdom. And us dogs, we're all about loyalty and companionship. We love being around our humans, going for walks, and just enjoying the simple things in life. It's true. You're always so excitable. It's true. In today's book, Max is a cat that is pessimistic and not really looking forward to doing anything. Let's get started. I'm so excited! Negative Cat by Sophie Blackall On day 427 of asking for a cat Cat? 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 Milk? Cat? Please? Okay my parents finally give in. You have to feed it. Also keep your room tidy. And clean out the litter. And write to your grandma. And read for 20 minutes every day. It better not have fleas. Ugh. I'm not so great at reading. Words only make sense when I read them out loud slowly. And the kids at school stare and laugh at me but I agreed to the rules before my parents changed their minds. I'm getting a cat. I'm getting a cat. I'm getting a cat. There are a million cats in the rescue shelter, and I want to take them all home. But Mom says, only one. Then I find him. The name on the cage is Pookie. That is no name for this cat. This cat is Maximilian Augustus Xavier, and we will call him Max. Have you ever thought about adoption? Oh, adoption, the art of embracing the unfamiliar with open paws. Just like a bone buried in a new yard. It's all about digging deep to find the treasures within. Well, that's a unique perspective. But seriously, have you ever considered adopting a furry companion like yourself? As they say, to find a companion is to find the mirror that reflects the soul. Is that a yes or just some fancy maxim? I've never adopted before, but I did rescue an armadillo and he lived with me for five months. That's like a trial run adoption. A seed of companionship watered by the rain of shared moments. Just like chasing my tail, it's a journey that leads to joyful circles. You've got a way with words, Rex. Adopting a pet means opening your heart to new adventures and creating a bond that's stronger than a leash. Like a kite thawing in the wind, adoption lifts spirits to heights unknown. It's about sharing the sky, even if you're from a different nest. When we get home, I'm excited to show Max his bed and his scratching post and his litter tray and his scent of the sea frisky bits. He's not excited. The next day I surprised Max with a toy mouse. He's not surprised. I tickle him with a feather. He's not ticklish. I tell him all my best jokes. He doesn't even smile. At school my friends go on about how excellent their cats are. Camilla can wear her cat like a scarf. Jack's cat can fetch a stick. Emilio's cat has its own Instagram. My cat stares at the wall. He's kind of negative, your cat. On the weekend, Dad lets Max have the best parts of the paper. Uncle Dave knits him a sweater. Mom lets him borrow her shoes. In return, Max leaves hairball on the rug, his tail in the butter, and poop in the vestibule. He eats the flowers and deletes my email to Grandma. Everyone is mad at Max. And then they're mad at me. He doesn't even purr. I'm calling the shelter. We should have gotten a dog. Your room is a mess. He hasn't been reading. 
Have you even written to Grandma? I still love you, Max. I'm such an optimistic person that I don't even understand how people can think negative or pessimistically. A gloomy outlook invites stormy skies. Look for the silver lining even when clouds gather. I think it takes a lot of energy being negative. Why not make a change and start enjoying your life? Change, my friend, is the wind that propels us forward. Embrace it and you'll steer your ship through uncharted waters with wisdom. Are you just quoting fortune cookies? No, but I try to bring a deeper perspective. Are you telling me that you always stay positive even in the classroom? With all the challenges in teaching these days, it's hard not to see the glass as half empty, but I, cho I, I choose to stay positive. But remember, my dear teacher, a classroom is a garden of opportunity, the weeds of challenge, nurture the flowers of growth. It's true. I hear that the lows in life help you appreciate the highs. The lantern of positivity banishes the shadows of doubt. You should take a walk and let the sun of optimism warm your spirit. When the lady from the shelter comes, Max and I hide in my room. The grown-ups talk on and on. Blah, 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 commitment, responsibility, blah, 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 negative. I have an idea. It's our only hope. I tidy my room in record time. I reach for a book. I take a deep breath. I begin to read slowly, out loud. The only way I know how. Max stares, but he doesn't laugh. I turn the page. Max inches closer and closer and closer. He tucks his head under my arm. I stay perfectly still and read and read. Right to the very end of the book. The lady from the shelter says Max and I should come and read to all the cats to cheer them up. So we do. Now my whole class comes every Tuesday and we all read out loud, fast or slow, however we like. The cats are happy and the lady at the shelter is happy and the parents are happy. Sort of. Can we please get a cat? 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 Ah, the joy of tales woven, not just for the human ear, but for the creatures of the wild as well. I thought it'd be a great idea to bring in some furry and feathery friends and share the magic of storytelling with them. Isn't that what we're doing already? Yeah, I guess it is. Reading can be so soothing and enchanting for everyone, regardless of species. I mean, who doesn't like listening to a good story? In the world of tales, all paws and claws find enlightenment. I have no idea what that means. But if you've enjoyed listening to this story, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Rex, and this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. When my kids were little, we adopted a cat from an animal shelter. The sign on her cage said her name was Cinnamon, but we called her Claudia, after a character from The Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frank Wheeler, and because she had claws. Over the years, she grew into what my son described as a negative cat. She ate the flowers, hugged the newspaper, and stared at the wall. She would ask to be stroked and bite your hand. She would demand to be fed, throw up on the carpet, and then complain that she was hungry. But we loved her. A few years ago, I wrote a negative cat story, but didn't know how to end it. I was about to put it in the doomed file of unfinished stories when I read about something extraordinary happening in the Animal Rescue League of Berks County, Pennsylvania. Children who wanted to practice their reading were encouraged to read to cats. Not only were the cats non-judgmental listeners, they became calmer and more sociable in the presence of readers. Children would read their books aloud, and before long a cat would sidle up, lean against them, and purr. Sometimes a deep bond was formed and a cat found its new home. I would like to thank the Animal Rescue League of Berks County for their work supporting animal welfare and literacy, and the Heart of the Cat Skills Humane Society for allowing me to hang out with, draw, and read to their cats. The Animal Rescue League Book Buddies program has inspired similar programs across the country. 
You can contact your local shelter to see if they welcome readers or book donations. Our own Claudia was a negative cat for most of her life, but she became surprisingly sweet in her final days. If only we'd read to her sooner. Sophie Blackall. Did you know? According to the National Science Foundation, an average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. Of those, 80% are negative thoughts. All negative thoughts are not bad. Being alert can help you survive, but most negative thoughts are useless. 